Josh Jacobs is currently dealing with an injury, and a lot of people have questions about Zamir White, a running back prospect who's sitting on the back end of this depth chart, who could be getting a lot of touches on Thursday night, or maybe not. We're going to dig into the data to see whether or not you need him, the title of this video, but make sure you watch till the end to get the full take on Zamir White and what we should be doing with him for fantasy football because sometimes I change this mid-video. I'm shooting off the hit as I read off the data, but we got that pulled up. But what you need to do right now is click that subscribe button. Tap it with the finger on your phone. Click it with the mouse on your computer. Whatever you need to do to get the job done because we go over the advanced data every day to help you with the waiver wire to help you set your lineups and everything else and if you don't click that button you're going to miss out on that information for your drafts next year and you're not going to get the player values the advanced metrics and everything else you need to get you set and ready for your drafts back in august here but let's look at Zamir White, Josh Jacobs, and company. Amir Abdullah, we're throwing it all in here. So Josh Jacobs hasn't been practicing. We got a game today. Very iffy. He's questionable. We're paying attention. We're watching the news. And we're going to see whether or not we need Zamir White here. Because if Josh Jacobs is out, that means Zamir White's going to be getting some opportunities. That means Amir Abdullah is going to be getting some opportunities. But will it be worth our while here for fantasy football? That's the huge question here. The practice reports as of yesterday looking at Josh Jacobs. Quadricep injury did not practice on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Questionable for Thursday. Devontae Adams too. And he's a key piece for this. It's an illness though. So he might be in the game. He might not. You got to pay attention to that depending on what kind of illness it is. He might be able to get some medication and play through it. We have to see. Chris Olave did that on Sunday. But he's a key piece to this puzzle as well. As we dig into this, you need to pay attention throughout the video to see why. But Josh Jacobs getting a lot of opportunities from week to week here. 20 to 25 to 30 per game. 22.2 on average throughout the season. That's touches and targets. So he gets a lot of workload. So even with him out, they're going to identify using the running back a lot. Whether it's a decrease or not, it'll still be a good bit going to the running backs, Amir Abdullah and Zamir White. That being said, when we look at Zamir White, because he is the upside play in this offense right now, we look at his collegiate profile. He was a high-end recruit coming out of high school. He was deemed Zeus because he was built like a grown man. He had some ACL injuries that set him back and slowed things down, but we ramped things up during his junior season with 856 yards, 11 touchdowns. Didn't catch the ball much during his college days, but we got one game here where we need to get the job done. If we can get some carries between the tackles, if we can bust it over the goal line, that could be good enough for us. 3.6 yards after contact per attempt during his final season, 3.29 on his career. You can see that below. So we get yards after contact. We're able to run through tackle. 37 missed tackles in his final season while sharing the backfield. He's not getting the full workload in college. Only 160 rushing attempts in his junior year in 2021. Not getting much workload in the receiving game. Still have the advanced metrics if you want it. 12.1 yards after the catch per reception during that final year. That's where he got the most workload, but it really wasn't much to hang our hat on. The reason why he was able to hit that number so well, though, is that size adjust athleticism, 96th percentile, 4-4, 40-yard dash at 214 pounds. We got size here, and we got speed. We have a little bit of explosiveness in the burst score. So when we look at everything together, we have an athlete here. If he gets some touches, some opportunities, and he taps into that upside. Not all players tap into their upside. That's just the realness of the game. If he taps into that upside, you might have something. The draft let him slide to the fourth round. That seems about right considering his injury history, considering the production profile we have coming out of college. But you look at the size of just athleticism. Coming from a top-tier Power 5 program, Zamir White, though, has some interesting specs to his profile. Has not been productive. I mean, he's behind Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs is getting the workload. Josh Jacobs had his best season of his career in 2022, been pretty good in 2023. He's not going to be getting many opportunities. Zamir White still a little bit raw as a runner per NFL terms. But when we look at the specs here, 
size adjusted athlete here, top tier athleticism, something you want to look at when we're looking at the touches, the distribution of workload with these running backs. It's the Josh Jacobs show. We do not have a huge sample here behind him. However, when we look at last year, this year, and try to combine things, Zamir White getting early down work. Amir Abdullah looking like he's getting the passing down work. Zamir White being used on short yardage and goal line. Amir Abdullah just getting touches out of the backfield. Being used as the satellite back. Looks like they're going to split it between these two running backs. Josh Jacobs could be in this game. That nullifies this whole video. But you still need this information here. Looking at the schedule. we got the Chargers right now. We can't prospect out really much past that. We have to see what happens here in week 15. We have to see what happens with the Chargers. And this is a matchup here where it's kind of ugly. we got a lot of guys out here. Vegas is saying, hey, we don't have much faith for this. We have a 34 and a half over under. One of the lowest point totals on the season because we have backup quarterbacks going at it. We have the ghost of Austin Eckler in there. We have injuries galore in both these matchups. Really could be an ugly game. The game script is saying, hey, we need to stay away from this. We need to stay away from this game because this could hurt those fringe fantasy players because there may not be enough output. The chains may not be moving enough. They keep these jabroni players from exceeding expectations in the box score. That is what Vegas is saying to us. So we may not be interested in Zamir White. Looking at the rankings here at 4 for 4 and just take a look at this. You may want to screenshot it for some of your other players for the rest of the week. But Ty Chandler over him, Keaton Mitchell over him, Jerry McKinnon over him, and Clyde edwards -Alaire. And then we got pushes technically if you want to look at it that way with Devin Singletary, Jonathan Foreman, Ty J. Spears, Zach Charbonnet, AJ Dillon, Gus Edwards. Those guys are a lot safer. You know what you're going to get. And Zamir White is a little bit of a gamble here because you do not know what you're going to get because of him, because of the offense too, and due to the matchup. And this could be a very slow game, but it could be in the opposite realm of the spectrum because we do have that size of just athleticism where if the holes open up, he could house it, he could do something, he could be getting some goal line looks. He does have the power and the burst to be able to get it for you. That being said, I see why they got him ranked the way he does because he is a gamble and he does have some upside so you cannot like put him below 40 because you're taking that away. And the matchup's kind of decent here. The Chargers run defense. When you look at it holistically, they rank 13th among production to running backs here. 18 PPR points per game to running backs. However, when you dig deeper here, there's only been one running back who scored more than 20 PPR fantasy points, and that's Jameer Gibbs. We had four scoring the 15 to 20 range, five scoring the 10 to 15 range, and we had four games total, just four games total here, where running backs scored less than 10 PPR fantasy points. That's all of the running backs on the team. Not one running back was able to do that in those matchups here. So on average here, we're not getting many running backs popping off against this team however on average we're staying around that 10 15 range things are being split up a bit they rank 13th among running backs something to look at here so honestly they are on a tear here these last few games at slowing things down making it harder for running backs on the opposing team to pop off in fantasy production so they've been on a hot run and they were a little bit more lenient to fantasy production earlier in the season and in the middle of the season these last few games slowed down a little bit. You need to be wary of that. That doesn't mean it can't happen or if they've all of a sudden gotten very tough. It's just the game scripts are kind of different. The plays are being ran different on both sides of the ball in these matchups. And you need to pay attention to what could go on here. And we have a huge wild card with these quarterbacks. So I would suggest you need Zamir White in your lineup if you need the touches and you want to go YOLO. And I do not suggest that. I don't suggest that. I think that's too much risk, and I would only do that if I feel like my back's kind of against the wall. I just snuck into the playoffs, and I'm going against a guy right now who has a very good lineup that could hurt my fantasy really bad and take me out, and I have to swing for the fence here, and I feel like I have to. I'm hit with injuries. The bye weeks really shouldn't be a thing for you. 
But if I need to swing for the fence, I will. If I'm hurting that bad at running back, then you got to do what you got to do. And you don't really need this video, maybe more for confirmation bias. But if you're hurting, you're hurting. And if you couldn't score on the waiver wire this week, then it is what it is. But he does have some upside. The upside is, is if he gets around the goal line, he could bring it in for you. That size adjusted athleticism could allow him to pop off because we have top tier size adjusted athleticism at around the 98th percentile. Something to look at. We have not been efficient in NFL terms this year, last year. That's something that's a huge red flag right now, but we don't have a sample. He hasn't been able to eat into the workload, even though it's Josh Jacobs. Of course, you want to meet Shield, your running back, a little bit, and they're not willing to do that. That being said, Zamir White is a huge red flag. When I look at the rankings from 4 from 4, and they're pretty conservative, I would look at the guys below them and look at them a little bit more safer options there, considering you know what you're going to get. However, if you want to shoot for more upside in that range, albeit go with Zamir White, but understand you could strike out. That being said, you got your own opinions, and your opinions matter. Drop that in the comment section below because I want to hear about it. Everybody else does too. That's going to help them. That's how you build a community, and you guys can feed back off each other. Really want to hear about that. But I do like Zamir White as a prospect. If this happened around week six, eight, or something like that, I'd be all over it. I'd be like, you need him. You need him off waivers. You need to stash him. You need him right now. We're in the playoffs right now. Every game matters. Do not get too busy, too risky. Do not get too frisky with your lineups. Do not play around too much unless you need to. If it's Sunday and you got killed on Thursday, then do it, of course. But play with what got you here. Use common sense and just play the matchups accordingly. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button on the way out. I want to thank you for watching. Catch you on the next video.